Electrophilic substitution. You may have come across electrophilic addition where an electrophile adds to an alkene, but electrophilic substitution is slightly different. We're going to look at the nitration of benzene. And the first step is to make our electrophile. Now remember, an electrophile is a species that's attracted to electron-rich areas. So in the case of nitration, it's going to be an NO2 plus ion. It's positive, so it's attracted to negative areas. And to make it, we start off with sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and nitric acid, which have these structures. And sulfuric acid is a stronger acid than nitric acid, so it can protonate nitric acid. In other words, a proton is removed from sulfuric acid, added to the lone pair of one of the oxygens on nitric acid, and it produces the hydrogen sulfate ion, which is what normally happens when sulfuric acid acts as an acid or proton donor. And the nitric acid has now gained a proton, so it's got a positive charge and two hydrogens on that oxygen. Notice charge is balanced, so we've got a negative charge there, a positive charge there, and that balances to electrically neutral. It was neutral before. If that water molecule breaks off, both the electrons going onto the water molecule, that leaves the NO2 positive and the water molecule, and we've made our electrophile, that NO2 plus species has a strong attraction to electron-rich areas, so it acts as an electrophile. And we need a good electrophile for benzene, because remember, benzene is very stable. So let's have a look at how this actually happens. How do we get electrophilic substitution of benzene using the NO2 plus? Now, in the substitution step, we have a benzene ring, and we draw that circle representing those delocalized electrons, and we'll also draw our electrophile, which is the NO2 plus and that's attracted to those electrons in benzene. And the aromatic electrons attack the N, so we draw that curly arrow from the ring to the nitrogen, and it produces an intermediate species that looks like this. Notice that aromatic ring has now been broken, there's a positive charge, and the carbon now has, um, as well as its hydrogen, it's going to have the NO2 plus attached to it, and the hydrogen. Now the NO2 plus lost its plus charge and the plus is now in the benzene ring. This is not very stable, so we've broken that aromatic ring structure. So we remake it by taking two electrons from the carbon-hydrogen bond, putting them back into the ring. So we remake our full ring for benzene, but in the place of the hydrogen, we've now got our NO2 group, or a nitro group, and the H plus has been kicked out. So that's a mechanism for the electrophilic substitution of benzene using an NO2 plus electrophile. But there's a second type of electrophilic substitution that we're going to look at too, and that's called the acylation reaction. So we're going to add an acyl group, a C double bond OR, onto benzene. So we start with an acyl chloride, acid chloride, and the R represents any alkyl group, so a hydrocarbon chain. And we react it with AlCl3, aluminium trichloride. Now think for a moment about aluminium trichloride. How many electrons does it have around the aluminium? Well, it's got three bonds. Each bond contains two electrons. Three times two is six. So that aluminium has six electrons. It's electron deficient. Remember, it wants eight electrons. So in the first step, it gets two more electrons from that carbon-chlorine bond. So we draw a curly arrow, breaking the CCl bond. Both of those going to making a new bond between the chlorine and the aluminium, and that leaves behind the COR plus ion and AlCl4. And notice that contains a dative bond as well, and that's negatively charged. Remember, charges need to balance. If it's electrically neutral before, it must have a net neutral charge at the end. So we've made our electrophile. It's this species, and that's a really good electrophile, and that will react directly with benzene adding into the ring and substituting hydrogen. So let's have a look at the mechanism. The mechanism for acylation is exactly the same as the mechanism for nitration. So we start with a benzene ring, and again that circle in the middle represents a delocalized electrons. Bring along our electrophile, which is attracted to those electrons, and then the ring attacks a carbon, forming a bond between the carbon and benzene and the carbon of the acyl group. So we're forming a new bond. Whoops, don't remember when you draw that circle in the middle, um, don't draw a full circle. We've got to break the aromatic ring centered on the carbon that has a new group attached to it. 
So there's your acyl group, and there's still a hydrogen attached to it. But remember, we've got an unstable ring there, so we have to remake our full ring by taking two electrons from the carbon-hydrogen bond to reform our aromatic ring structure in benzene. And we've now created a ketone and a hydrogen ion. And that hydrogen ion that has been kicked out in the second step can react with the AlCl4, and it removes one of the chlorines to form AlCl3 and H+. So if you think about it, AlCl3 has been regenerated, so it must be acting as a catalyst in this reaction. So finally, we're just going to look at a couple of common mistakes to avoid when you're drawing these mechanisms. And it's important to be prepared and know about these mistakes so you don't make them um, when you're drawing the mechanisms yourself. So just remember the following things. Firstly, when we draw the intermediate partway through the electrophilic substitution reaction, if E represents the electrophile, we shouldn't draw the ring like this. Can you see what's wrong with that? Actually, this is how we need to draw the ring. It's still a broken ring, but the point it breaks must be somewhere in that green region, and that's a lot better. So it's a bit of a, sm a smaller break in the ring. Still put the positive charge in. And secondly, watch out. When you draw the curly arrow, it doesn't go too far into the ring. The curly arrow is remaking the ring structure, so it just goes into that gap just there. Good luck, and I hope you've enjoyed learning about electrophilic substitution. I'll see you again.